Hola, Mickey. Hey, Bob. ¿Cómo está? Uh, uh, so you're like speaking Spanish these days. You're not in the country? You, you read my mind. Um, where in the world I'm is Bob? Ba- I'm in Barcelona, or Barcelona, as they say. Uh, cool. Um, uh, I knew that, of course. But um, uh, what's happening there? Why are you there? And- well, it's funny you should ask. You know, the Spanish edition of my book, Non-Zero, which, by the way, is available in English, just in, in the event that we should have any English-speaking viewers, is being published. And um, so I came over here to do some uh, promotional stuff. Um, and, gr- and, and I've been doing it. Great. Have you have you read over the translation to make sure that every nuance was translated accurately? I've read it several times. Actually, I do speak a tiny bit of Spanish, and I was kind of impressed with a couple of things I saw in the translation. Yeah. Really, that's true. Okay. So and we're like showing on. So we're like doing this uh, transatlantically, which is as if we weren't cutting edge enough. As, you know, as as they as they as they tell us, the technology of this show is impressive. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the one thing that some people say and, is impressive about the and, show offhand. I can't think of any and, others. And we're very brave. Well, um, do the do all the obvious things at Barcelona. Go visit the Gaudí thing. Uh, yes, I plan yeah, to. Yeah. And uh, it's a great place. Um, now, as a result of being here, I've been in kind of a news blackout uh, as a result of so relentlessly promoting myself here. I really have not been keeping up on things. So uh, I'm going to use you as my guide to important world events and interrogate you and have you fill me in. Um, I did want to tell you the one thing I've learned in Spain first, though. Okay. Which is that whenever uh, Bush wants a foreign country to do something, right. he should ask it to do the opposite of what he really wants. You know, Spain just agreed to sell some military equipment to uh, Venezuela. Did that get any play in the States? It was a big story here. No play. Oh, okay. Well, the Bush administration had, had very heatedly warned against this. And it's, 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 first of all, a typical Bush overreaction of kind of, you know, uh, cold, cold warriors, reflexive cold warriors like Cheney and Rumsfeld to kind of, I mean, all, all Venezuela is buying from Spain is patrol boats and transport planes. And, and I can't imagine them doing too much that's it's going to be inimical to American interest. But the Bush administration made a big deal about it. You know, don't do this. We, we have, you know, some, some of the things you're selling have American parts, and so we should have a say, blah, blah, blah. And the Spanish prime minister said, um... What's your name again? I don't recall asking you about this and agreed to sell them anyway. And the reason he did that, I mean, one reason, one thing that made it easy is that Bush is so widely disliked uh, in Spain and a lot of European countries and in a lot of non-European countries that a leader actually gets points domestically for defying Bush. So they just kind of sit around hoping Bush will tell them not to do something so that they can do it and, and rise in the opinion polls, you know. So I think Bush uh, should basically just... Tell people he wants them to do the opposite of what he actually wants them to do. I think, you know, one reason he'll be reluctant to adopt this strategy is the one time he he did try this. You may recall when he said to the insurgents, uh, bring it on. And, you know, in that case, it didn't work. They actually did do it. Well, a similar strategy may work in Iraq in in terms of uh, if we say, no, no, don't don't make us leave when we really want to leave then the Iraqis can be proud of kicking us out as opposed to which, and, uh, when we wanted to leave anyway. So uh, I think that's a strategy that William Sapphire predicted even before the war started, that, uh, that we'll let them uh, you know, get their, uh, assert their pride and independence by kicking us out, uh, by making us do something we, we really want to do anyway. When you have a fledgling government that you want to gain legitimacy, it's a good idea to let them look as if they have... Uh, power, as you may recall, I argued that earlier that uh, at a, in a previous take that Ariel Sharon should have uh, let Mahmoud Abbas play a seemingly bigger role in, in instigating the uh, Gaza withdrawal. But anyway, you're, you're right. Uh, that, 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 there's that too, and there is and there is Iraq still, and that leads me um, to a question. I uh, when I got here, I turned on the TV and Bush was giving this big speech. Uh, he had this kind of like plan for victory wallpaper behind him. Right. Wonkette did a very funny thing where she contrasted the, 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 the script behind him as he gave his various Iraq speeches. The first one was mission accomplished. The second one was strategy for victory. I think the third one was a plan for Iraq. And she thought the fourth one was going to be let's have a brainstorming session. Uh, they've gotten progressively less triumphalist. Uh, yeah. Now, what did it say? Did it say plan for victory or strategy for victory? I, there were several of them, actually. Oh, so, it was... Uh, 
I well, in the big speech at the Naval Academy, there was just one phrase. It was like it was like wallpaper, right? On yes, I forget yeah. what it was. But well, anyway, uh, my question is, how did that go over? I didn't. I, th I think the speech went over pretty well. I mean, not that many people actually saw it. It was it was not a roadblock thing on the networks. Uh, uh, the 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 reactions after it. Uh, on, on the left, Pelosi endorsed Mirtha's uh, quick withdrawal plan or quick redeployment plan. So that was a big shift in, in the Congress. And, 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 and that seems to have upset a lot of Democrats. Uh, and, on, and, and Hillary sort of joined Lieberman on the right in saying we have to finish what we started. Now, the note detected a subtle recalibration of Hillary toward the center away from Lieberman. Uh, I didn't detect it. Uh, she basically said, look, we're not going to stay there forever, but we have to tough it out now. It was a pretty hawkish speech, I thought. Uh, and I, I sense uh, sort of two consensus is developing. The first obvious consensus is uh, there's sort of a, 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 a slight sort of gathering behind the president. So let's, let's give this one more shot and let's give this current strategy uh, – uh, do the best we can uh, at it, and the strategy is to train the Iraqis and do this very difficult thing where we try to give them more power while at the same time we uh, keep control of the military, sort of so we, we give them more autonomy, we, 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 we embed our troops, and we don't give them key weapons. There's a big debate over... Don't let them slaughter Sunnis. Yeah, there's a big debate over we let them be the call in the airstrikes, or do we, you know, give them the, the heavy weapons? And so there's that little dance, and, and we try to get them all to join the military without sort of using that as the basis for, for fighting each other, different factions within the military. And it's all very difficult, And but the military commanders seem to be completely aware of all these things. You know, they, there was a story, in, a very good story in the Wall Street Journal about how in some battle they wanted a Sunni battalion sent from Baghdad, to control a Sunni population, and instead the government sent a Shiite battalion that started, you know, uh, making anti-Sunni noises. And the, mil avoid that. the military Always. had to, like, get them out of there, get them shipped back to Baghdad. They, it's very difficult, but th there is a sort of growing impression that at least Bush is in sync with his gen generals, and his generals sort of know what's going on. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a... And the second consensus is if that doesn't work, is it really so terrible to have a Sunni Shiite war? Which is uh, the very interesting, very interesting article on the American Thinker compared it to the, this is like the strategic coup of the Sino-Soviet split uh, in the Cold War. You know, we're that's a blog, we're, right? We're, uh, I think it's a blog, like a right-wing blog, like yeah, it's definitely a, a right, kind of it's, a crude right-wing. It's blog, a right-wing right? blog, but in this case, it's, almost too crude to be mentioned on our our highbrow. It is. Show. No, I don't think it's that crude. No, but it's uh, it's 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 sort of wacky. But in this case, it's so wackily right-wing that it's come full circle in its agreement with General Odom, uh, who is a champion of the left at the moment, and he sort of says, "Well, there's going to be a civil war, so we might as well get out of there as quickly as possible. Let it happen. Let the Shiite dictator." Arise in the south, and they, and they'll and have their like fun. This idea. Uh, well, I, I, Odom, I, would, I would go with crude rather than wacky. I think o it's Odom says it's the Odom says, it's wacky. Odom says it's the best of it's the best we can do, and the right wing guy says it's a brilliant strategic move to split our enemies. The Sunnis and Shiites will fight each other instead of uniting against us. Uh, why is it crazy? I mean, I, well, I it's crazy me. because there's no way to control the civil war. I mean, leaving aside, you know, how your your conscience might trouble you a little bit if if uh, tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of people died. Um, the uh, the fact is, there's no being sure we could control it. There's no way. I mean, by definition, we won't be there, right? I mean, right. You, you know, it could it could spin completely out of control. But. Look, I mean, I'm not saying it's necessarily better than what's going to happen anyway in the long run, but... But, uh, if, but if, you know. you're, if you're looking at it strictly in war on terror terms, in other words, you're callous and heartless, and if they want to kill each other, that's their business. What's going to come back and kill us? Is it terrible to have al-Qaeda revealed as an anti-Shiite organization and have Iran allied against that well, kind remember, of... in the Muslim world, we will get blamed for all the deaths on both sides. This is the, probably, and, and, that, and that's not good. See, I see, a, I see a, a bigger problem with it, which is, uh, uh, in this case, we'll have... This is like China and Russia, but in this case, they're Muslim, and they you know, may eventually have nuclear weapons, and they're not fighting a symmetrical war the way the Russians and the Chinese were. Uh, if, if, if it's really a terrorist enemy... 
somehow they you can't deter them the way you could deter Russia and China, and it doesn't do you all that much good to have what, two of them. You mean they can't deter each other? Or you mean right, who's we can't them? deter them? We can't deter them after somebody wins and there's a terrorist state. You mean or what? If the problem is that there are Islamic radical terrorists who want to do us in, yeah, it's it, it doesn't do that much good to have them fighting each other if they both have nuclear weapons and they still want to do us in, and because uh, terrorism is not like. A, a conventional nuclear war, you, you know, you when a bomb goes off and destroys Manhattan, you don't know where it's from. Uh, you don't know if the Sunnis or the Shiite faction of the radical Islamists well, you know, are celebrating. This is all familiar territory. No, right. That's what I thought. Those who have been trying to that's what I thought convince you were the gonna, Bush administration and things like this for a long time. That's what I thought you were going to say. Yeah, but, well, this is, just seems so kind of far off, like when they have nuclear weapons. I mean, these guys aren't going to have, there will they're, they're hardly be a bloodbath long before either one of them has nuclear weapons. Yeah. Seems like but, these are kind of third order effects. Well, and, 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 I mean, look, if, if, if they don't have a civil war, you know, this, this, <laughs> there's just a lot of grim scenarios out there. I mean, if a Sunni state, if there's a standoff and a, and a kind of terrorist Sunni state emerges, that you know that has equally dire implications in the event that it should get a hold of nuclear weapons. And you're right, conventional deterrents don't work against terrorists. That's one reason some of us didn't think the Iraq War was a good idea. But I mean, as for the withdrawal scenario, uh, you know, I don't think if you're going to look at it in political terms, which you know, not that anyone would in Washington, but I don't think it's a good idea for the Democrats to become the driving force behind withdrawal because. Uh, like many uh, strategic options, it has, stands a pretty good chance of going awry, and it would be kind of unfair if if that if we did you know withdraw, chaos ensued, and the Democrats got a large share of blame for it. I think that would be kind of unfair so since what, it was really a B in the Republican bond so, that got so, us into this. So case. you're part of the consensus. You 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 say, well, look, we got to pursue this strategy uh, as best uh, we can, uh, and. And, and then if it all comes apart, we, we can blame Bush for starting it all. Uh, well, that's not why. I mean, leaving aside the political calculus, I'm, I, I'm not favoring withdrawal at this point, just in terms of what Right, what so then you're, part the of the, then you're part of the consensus along with everybody else, along with Washington. I suppose. I mean, I mean, my feeling is certainly at least wait and see what happens in the election. But I don't purport to, to, to you know, ha, ha, have a, a, a good, clear plan at this point. Yeah, you know? well... Well, I mean, even Juan Cole is, is sort of, I think, part of the consensus. He disagrees as to how much the air power versus ground power we should have and how much, whether we should have, allow the Shiites to be spotters for our airstrikes. But, uh, but it, he tried... He has he, always warned against withdrawal. He was warning people on the left against withdrawal right, months right, ago. Right, right. Well, I, I, but all I'm saying is you, you, you can't disguise the fact that sort of there's a general agreement. Yeah, but it's not a new with... consensus. It's just, you know, it's just something we started paying attention to after the Murtha speech, right? I mean, it's not. Have, are there a lot of people that have gone from favoring withdrawal to opposing it? I think there, I think there are people who took a hard look and were sort of in some sort of vague anti-Bush limbo land, and, and now Bertha, as John Pat Horace wrote in the New York Post, forced people to choose, well, maybe and more people chose against Bertha than chose with him, except for Nancy Pelosi, who's out there on a limb with him. Right, right. I mean, there hasn't been any kind of reversal I mean, of opinion, but it's crystallized opinion and uh, not in favor of mo withdrawal. Most Bush haters would disagree with you and say you're wrong to take the position you've just taken. Uh, I've driven a wedge. The being don't withdraw, you mean? Yes, I've driven a wedge. They think, you mean they think there's political advantage in withdrawing? No, they think we, we should. I, they, they claim to think we should actually uh, endorse the Mirtha plan. I mean, I think they're driven by, blinded by anti-Bush animus, but, but uh, that's what they would say. They would say, look, uh, you know, they would take the General Odom position. We're, we're causing more trouble than, than, well, than I, we're helping. I, it's not that I consider it an obviously stupid idea. I think there are no plainly good options at this point. It, you right. know, it's, it's a mess. Uh, I, just don't, well, I just don't know enough to be confident. Yeah. Well, I, anyway, I see this emerging second backup consensus, whereas if the current plan fails, we'll say, okay, so there's a civil war. Is that so really, really so bad for us? Uh, uh, it's a, you know, a cloud as small as a man's hand on the horizon now. But, uh, but this is one of your favorite things to do, is to look at apocalyptic scenarios and say, is this really such a bad thing after all? You yes, do that, that a lot. That is one of, the, one of my favorite things to do. It's my idea of a good time. What's that? It's my idea of a good time. Uh, hey, as long as you're the, happy, I think that's all I really care about, Mickey. The, the other thing that uh, Newsweek had a report on Bush's uh, alleged threat against Al Jazeera, 
this was an Isakov Hosenball piece. They're very reliable. And they seem to suggest that Leaving it was... aside the Quran story. Which aside from the Quran story, okay. yes. Um, looking at the overall track record. Right. Uh, now, Isakov is good overall. And uh, he... Um, uh, they seem to take it seriously. They got a quote from a British people saying, well, Tony Blair survey didn't think it was a joke. And if you remember, it occurred during the, the initial battle for Fallujah when we were getting an incredible black eye internationally, especially in the Arab world, and people were really annoyed at Al Jazeera. And I think eventually the Iraqi government banned Al Jazeera from the country. Uh, so it's not completely implausible that Bush would want to bomb their offices, although it's, it, it's, it's bizarrely counterproductive in, the, in, in a very Bush-like way. Yeah. Uh, uh, but it, it, so it seems to me that the, 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 that story is not false. You think it's probably true? I mean, will well, the truth I, ever come out? I mean, if this memo, if we get to see this British memo, do you, uh, first of all, will we get to see it? Secondly, will it be fairly clear then? Well, they're they're prosecuting the people. They're, pros they're, 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 they're sending all sorts of alarm bells. They sent an email to editors saying, don't publish this or you'll be a vi in violation of the British Official Secrets Act. They're actually prosecuting the people who leaked it. They're creating such a fuss about it that it, I think it, they're making it, this is Isakov's point, they make it more likely that it'll come out. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'd say there's a good chance of it coming out. I don't. They, they, these British documents don't seem to ever actually come out the way American documents do, though. So, hmm. I'm. I mean, if you look at the history of the Official Secrets Act, it seems to sort of work. Uh, so, uh, I mean, has the whole, has the entire Downing Street memo come out? I think maybe, maybe it has. But sure. in America, all, all these things come out immediately, and in Britain, they don't. So. I'd say it's 50-50. Hmm. I hope it doesn't come out. Wouldn't put it past him, but it certainly would be a would not be a tribute to his enlightenment. Um, it, this reminds me of a, a, another story I caught wind of, and I'm going to turn it into a uh, a riddle. Um, the uh, this uh, idea that we I more or less just saw the headline that we have been paying to have stories planted in the in the Iraq newspaper. Right, that came out of the Los Angeles Times earlier this week. And, and, and it has legs? I mean, that it has not been discredited? I don't think it's been discredited, no. I mean, legs legs implies that the public is all a Twitter about it. And okay, they're not right. I, I, don't think the public least, is a, I don't think the public's a Twitter. It has at least as much life support as being true gives something. Yeah, um, it's it's now, another arrow in the left-wing quiver along with white phosphorus and, you know, all the other issues, yeah. Okay, the, here's, my, here's my riddle. I, the, I caught on, on, on CNN International tonight a little bit of uh, uh, footage of, or, or some, somewhere, some report of the Egyptian government having intimidated uh, voters who supported the Muslim Brotherhood in a very thuggish way in this latest round of elections. I d okay. You, you're not... Uh, I know they had elections and the Muslim Brotherhood did relatively well. Well, actually, no. In the, in the most recent thing, apparently they didn't do well, I think, if I got this right. This is, a kind of, this is the kind of story that actually probably gets more play in Europe than the United States. But I think they, again, don't hold me to this, but I, fragmentary reports indicate they didn't do so well and, and that the government really uh, thuggishly, uh, they didn't kill somebody. I mean, the cops huh. were very heavy-handed in apparently discouraging uh, voters, impeding voting at places where there was a lot of support for the Muslim, Muslim Brotherhood now. My, my riddle is, my question is, what does that story have in common with the planting stories in Iraqi newspapers story? It's part of the thuggish Bush efforts to subvert democracy around the world. Wrong. In your view. Wrong. In both cases, the government in question fails to understand that we live in an increasingly transparent world. The things you do, the underhanded things you do, are more likely to get recorded and ultimately publicized. It's like Abu Ghraib, you know, in an age of digital cameras and emailed pictures. You just can't have a bunch of a bunch of soldiers doing stuff like that. And you just have to be more and more careful about what you do. Uh, there, you know, in Egypt, you could have done this 40, 50 years ago with a much less I, likelihood of things getting <laughs> photographed, videotaped, so on. But that's the sort of thing they tried in the Ukraine, too. Uh, yeah. And it was broadcast worldwide. So I, I can't believe Mubarak didn't know that this would these images. I tell you, would, these people are and, incredibly and slow he, he must you, have, see, you see it in China too. You still see China. You see Cold War totalitarian reflexes at work in China, and they're finding out it doesn't work too. And this is what you know. A, a couple of conversations ago, 
uh, when I said, I think kind of a, a little cryptically almost, I didn't elaborate, that Bush doesn't deserve much credit for the, the, the pluralizing forces in, in the Middle East, has much more to do with te technology. This is the kind of thing, I mean, I, you know, it's, th this is ultimately a step forward for democracy, the fact that the Egyptian government tried this heavy-handed tactic, it's, it's becoming public, they're going to get embarrassed, and Bush had nothing to do with this. He doesn't have to have anything to do with it. It's, it's te technology is opening things up, and, and that, that's a, a lot of what Lebanon was about, a lot of what the Ukraine you is really, about. You really is why we don't have to be invading countries. You really claim that the Iraq war and the fact that there is now a working, uh, if, if badly, working democracy in the middle of the Middle East had nothing to do with Mubarak having to open up his government a bit? I think that's... A, it's absurd. I, I don't know, but my point is, if it accelerated it by a few years, it was not worth the price. Uh, That's a different point. What? That is a different point. You, your book, Non-Zero, says eventually we all end up in democracy anyway, so why do anything? I don't, I'm not quite that optimistic, but anyway... Um, uh, well, no, there is some time pressure. I mean, I mean, to me, the key time pressure comes from looking at uh, the... the the growing, slowly growing over the next 20, 10, 20, 30 years likelihood of terrorists being able to get a hold of massively lethal weapons, by that I mean either nuclear or contagious biological weapons, which doesn't include anthrax. I mean, right. something contagious that could kill millions. That becomes more and more plausible 10, 20, 30 years out if at that point the world is still a mess and has. Uh, you know, uh, crazy dictators who hate America, and it has a bunch of collapsed states where chaos prevails. So we we do we do have to you know, a couple decades down the road, we do have to have a world that's very different from the one today. But that gives us some time. We don't have to invade every country now. Well, but to it, start democracy. But you said it didn't matter if it accelerates it by a few years. Well, if there are these two trains running for the station, and it's a question of which gets there first. A few years might make all the difference, no? Well, right, but the other factor in terrorism, aside from what armaments is, are available, is how many terrorists are, are there? How much do they hate us? It's along that dimension that I think the Iraq War has, it seems to be such a setback as to more than compensate for any few years of acceleration along the other track. That's very different from claiming that... that Mubarak will be doing what he's doing now without well, the invasion of Iraq. That. I didn't say yes to that question, did I? I thought you said that Bush had nothing to do with what was going on in Egypt, and I, I claim I that that's I, not I true. I thought I, I, uh, I cunningly said little to do, and if I, I didn't, then we'll I, go then back I to the retroactively video changed the record. I certainly <laughs> didn't say nothing in the la last time we talked about okay. it, and if, and if. Uh, if I just said it, it was just the intoxication you, of being in Barcelona. And, you've and, probably uh, been hitting the absinthe. The, um, the, uh, but so your point is that if he, Mubarak would be doing what he's doing eventually anyway, even if it accelerated a bit, technology would produce what's going on, the, the opening up of Egypt uh, soon enough, without the toxic side effects. Yes, of with war. some encouragement. There are things we can do. We need yeah. to draw these, these countries into the global economy. So, for example... Uh, ending our farm subsidies and Europe's farm subsidies. I think that in the long run, it does more to build democracy in the world than evading Iraq because it does more to draw underdeveloped countries into the larger market economy, and I think that is a democratizing force. There's all kinds of things we could do that we're not doing that don't involve all the costs of Iraq if we really wanted to get serious about, about building democracy. Yeah. My point is only that the costs of Iraq have been occurred, so we might as well make the best of the situation. Well, I'm not, I'm not saying that we make the worst of it. I don't yeah. think I've argued that yet. Yeah. Um, well, uh, you're the uh, so uh, so we're both into a, a grand apocalyptic visions. That, it's, I mean, it's a living. Uh, so um, anyway, uh, we were linked on the Uniblogger as a soft core porn site. I think that's an, that's. A major marketing move. Well, we've been courting that audience for some time, and it finally paid off, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. It, um, uh, At this point, I think we'll pretty much take what we can get. Yeah, we're still... I think it would be a pretty far right-wing hate site, you know, that, that, that we would disavow, right, we're, at this point. <laughs> we're, still doing, we're still doing the broadcast closed, though, so there's some steps we haven't taken. Some things, not that we won't do, but that we haven't yet had we're, to do, but stay tuned. We're holding that in reserve. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, have a great trip. Hey, you too. Um, and I'll uh, I'll talk to you uh, stateside. Great. Buenas tardes. Uh, see. Okay. Take care. Adios.